Salt is a mineral that may seem quite uncomplicated and simple, but its significance in various aspects of our lives just cannot be overstated. Salt is not just some common seasoning ingredient, it also has many crucial uses. But do you know how this important resource is made? What processes are involved in the making of salt? And how challenging is it to consistently produce great quality salt for the industries or factories? In this video, we are taking you to the Cerebo Salt Factory, South Africa. We will tell you about the contemporary methods of production of salt. Keep watching. And if you're curious for more such content, don't forget to like and subscribe. Salt adds flavor to food, preserves food, and is used in various cooking and baking recipes. It is used in culinary arts. Also, salt is used in various industries like chemical manufacturing, water treatment, and de-icing roads in snowy areas. Plus, salt can be used for cleaning as a natural exfoliator and even in some beauty treatments. Its importance broadens far beyond our kitchens, making it an indispensable resource for various aspects of our society. The methods of the making of salt have highly evolved over the period of time. Earlier, methods of salt preparation were quite different from today. In the previous times, people patiently stood by while the water evaporated from big, huge salt pans. Then they collected all the dried salt with the use of trucks and bulldozers. But the recent methods are far different from those. Let's know more about them. Well, the first process draws some similarities with the old times method. Large salt pans are filled with seawater, which has 3% of salt content in it. As the sun evaporates the water, it concentrates in a period of 12 to 18 months, depending upon the weather patterns and seasons of the area. After achieving some specific saline conditions, the water is pumped into different pans till it reaches the saline saturation level of about 23 to 24% of salt content. Now the salt brine gets fired up to the Cerebus salt factory with the use of 12 kilometers of underground pipes, where we can know more about the modern processes of extracting salt. There are huge vessels for the evaporation of brine. More evaporation of water takes place when the brine is boiled. The brine is then made to pass through a network of various shell and tube heat exchangers for there to be an increment in the temperature of the liquid. It is first passed through a condenser and then it is pumped into a lot of preheaters, all for the sake of increasing the brine temperature. The temperature is made to increase from a serene 25 degrees Celsius to about 80 to 90 degrees Celsius, right before entering a huge vessel for further evaporation. A turbo compressor with a titanium impeller, which spins with a speed of about 22,000 revs per minute, is used to suppress the steam. Each hour, 24 tons of superheated steam is provided with this turbo compressor. This superheated steam is then passed through a heat exchanger and made to run through the middle of the large evaporation vessel. This increases the brain's temperature to 116 degrees Celsius, reaching the required boiling temperature for saturated brine. The saturated brine has a higher boiling temperature than fresh water, which is 100 degrees Celsius. A further concentrated brine liquid is received as the water evaporates in the vessel when the brine boils. Salt crystals start to form in the evaporation vessels as the brine begins to oversaturate. And after reaching a certain size, they will have the required gravimetric mass to enter into a salt leg, which is the bottom of the machine. The salt crystals enter the salt leg with a composition of 50% water and 50% salt. More dewatering occurs as this salt slurry is fired up into a centrifuge. The leftover water is then removed. The water is thrown out when the inside system of the centrifuge rotates at a high speed. Pure salt with 3% of moisture content remains in the centrifuge. This means that the centrifuge reduces the water content from 40% to 3%. Doesn't that sound astounding? Later, the remaining pure salt with 3% of moisture is put into the fluid bed dryers, where warm air is blown into the machine, which reduces even more moisture content from the salt. The moisture content then becomes just 0.05%. In the end, the salt is cooled. Iodine and free flow additives are then added to the freshly prepared salt. This salt is then stored in silos and then travels for packaging. The salt is pumped into packets of 25 kilograms, 1 kilogram, or 500 grams. The packets for holding the salt are formed, filled, and sealed, all in just one automated process. Hence, these machines used for packaging are known as form, fill, and seal machines. The packets are then taken by a stretch wrapping machine in loads by hand, where they are wrapped in plastic for extra safety. 
The salt is still produced by seawater, but the modern methods make it highly pure and clean. The only remainder of this process is fresh water, which is just another significant need for us. The fresh water too is produced in bottles in another branch of the Cerebros factory. In addition, you would be amazed to note that the Cerebros salt factory manufactures about 100 tons of salt every single day. The world's largest salt producer, China National Salt Industry Corporation, Ciencic, produces 23 million tons of salt annually. More than 70% of salt in China is produced by this factory alone. In 2022, China produced a record-breaking 64 million metric tons of salt, continuing to be the largest salt producer in the world. China National Salt Industry Corporation has its own unique methods of production, including seawater extraction, lake brine extraction, and rock salt mining. Let us dive deep into each of them. The first method is the seawater extraction method. This method of salt production involves collecting seawater and allowing it to evaporate naturally under the sun. Salt crystals begin to form as the water dries up. These crystals are then processed to remove impurities, resulting in the production of salt. It is such a simple and natural way to obtain salt from the sea. The lake brine extraction method includes collecting brine from lakes. The brine is then pumped into shallow ponds and left to evaporate under the sun. As the water evaporates, salt crystals begin to form. These crystals are then harvested to obtain salt. It's another natural and effective method of salt production. Finally, the rock salt mining method involves extracting salt from underground salt deposits, also known as salt domes. These salt domes are formed by the movement of salt layers deep within the Earth's crust. Miners use techniques of drilling and blasting to access the salt deposits, and then the salt is processed and then purified to produce rock salt. Moreover, did you know that the preparation of table salt is completely based on the process of evaporation? Salty seawater is collected from the oceans and then evaporated to leave behind the salt crystals. These crystals are then cleaned and refined. Later, the crystals are iodized right before being packaged as table salt. Isn't it a pretty straightforward process? We have also brought to you the method of preparation of the pink Himalayan salt. It is not actually from the Himalayas, instead it is made by mining salt crystals from the Kiura salt mine in Pakistan. The salt crystals are then hand extracted and washed. They are then dried in the sun to create the beautiful pink Himalayan salt that we see. We think it is a fascinating process, do you agree? In addition to this, we have some amazing salty facts you'd be surprised to hear. Keep watching! Did you know that salt was once used as a form of currency? People used to trade salt for goods and services. And have you ever wondered why we put salt on icy roads? It's because salt lowers the freezing point of water, helping to melt the ice and make the roads safer. Did you know that salt can be used to create beautiful and intricate salt art? Artists create stunning sculptures just by manipulating salt crystals. The evolved methods of salt production are definitely a boon for the industry and equally healthy for us and our environment. What are your final thoughts about these methods? Do you think we missed out on something? Do you have any questions we can assist you with? And if you want more of these interesting videos, let us know of some recommendations in the comments below.